Hello, everybody, and welcome to Libromancy, a podcast about the magical. I'm Josh, and today I'm talking about Posthumous Education by Drew Hayes. So let's teach the magic books. Hey, everybody, Fred the Vampire, the utterly uninteresting vampire, is back. Vampire Accountant. This is going to be a really fun book. I really enjoyed reading it. It is good. And if this is the first one you're listening to, well, that's a weird decision to make because there's six other books, seven other books. This is number eight, I believe. And starting with number eight is a little odd, but if you don't remember, or if it's it's been a while. These books are structured so that there are five uh, very short stories inside of each novel. And I'm sure you can guess this novel's theme just from the title alone. It is about vacation. And I like that story as has been has been the case the whole time. Small story sets up to tell the larger full story at the end. You know, when you get done, you're like, yes, they are all connected. They all have good foreshadowing to each other and hints at each other. And they are really good. This book, the five short stories we get are an un- unexpected enrollment, an eventful guest lecture, an impromptu do field trip, a hectic homecoming, and the commence. So let's start talking about them in a more spoilery setting. Really, I don't have much to say. I think we're in a non-spoiler way. We're getting lots of good character development still, some changes, getting the growth and the reliability of the comedy and the humor while keep serious and having real moments. So Drew Hayes is just doing an excellent job on these and I'm not going to, can't really say much else about that. So let's just get into it and talk about what's going on in this book. In our first book, September, uh, if you don't remember him, he is a fae. Sent by Hellboy, he's a fae prince invites Frederick to go and teach at school, Trestlevend University, which is kind of one of the only paranormal universities around. It's completely hidden, it's completely safe, and he's even goes so far as to say that it is safe for Fred to be there, that the sun won't hurt him while he's in the while he's there, he can go outside, which is a kind of a big thing. And since this is the favor from Hellbor, the winter is making notes say, like, hey, this is not going to affect your business. So they give him basically a much better version of the time turner, but it's more of a magical time presser so you're in the box it's one minute on the outside two minutes on the inside five minutes ten minutes an hour combined with frederick not needing to sleep along with not having to worry about accidentally aging himself too much and this is a magical way that he can keep his business going while getting constant communication while he's in trestle van so this is a really fun one uh, i love that the, they're talking it's like well i gotta start growing the business and we're getting to the point where i can't be involved with everybody as much as i want to so i'm gonna have to let lillian and asha start taking over stuff and he's like crystal writes down on her thing give hokey speeches Lillian and then crosses it out saying no I like your hokey speeches and it's just funny they're dynamic funny. I deal with the serious crazy every day I love coming home and your funniness and your silliness and that's what I love you know and then he goes on campus and he's kind of get tour and he meets Keith a vampire who was mind controlled by Quinn and basically one of those ones Quinn raised hack him and Keith had never gotten back to him none of the vampires had so he's like oh cool kid one of my vampires I can help him we meet some other professors none of which are really and we don't really go into any detail with any of the other professors they're not on screen generally really long enough for us to care but then we meet with headmaster sequoia and she's interesting she exudes this power of don't mess with me or you're going to die basically the same as the dragon and he's being interviewed by her and she's like well i'm not sure about your references I'm just not sure i can trust anybody who's been recommended to me by a dragon because generally the dragons you know reference uh, traits they care about are greediness avarice willful destruction of property things like that he's able to you know like whoa it's not me like she understands she gets it so that's basically basically the first book and then let's move into the second one second one an, an, an eventful guest lecture amy comes to guest lecture she comes to give a little lecture for fred she's pressured into giving a real lecture for a bunch of uh, other alchemy students goes she gives her lecture it's really funny because as amy always does she's taken a lot of drugs so she's slightly high and she has the liquid courage say but in this instance it pretty much is liquid courage that just makes her indifferent to anything she's saying pointedly calls out somebody's ugly hat multiple times and after that we get a neck romancer fight yet the amalgamation which is a tender against albert and well, tender's name is cassidy she has a lot of necromancer minions she gets into a fight with uh, amy during the lecture just saying you know oh this is and she doesn't get into a little funny thing is you can fight my apprentice because it's not fair if i just go in the ring and beat you so they have the necromancer fight albert and neil have obviously perfected and are doing even better at their albert's the zombie and he fights with his sword neil does the buffing and suppressing of the other side crowd control but cassidy's minions are all amalgamation so they're you no know, rabbit body with a turtle head kind of things but I don't remember all exactly but they're they're mismatched so they're fighting and Neil and Albert have the clear advantage getting the white floor with them until Cassidy merges all of hers together and it creates this like super behemoth all of her magic then she passes out and they are still winning but it's much slower going until it breaks control and is trying to go kill Cassidy they save her you know by losing the duel because Albert has to draw the sword gotten champion if that's not the right name of the sword I just forgot what it is exactly so don't worry I know it's the 
the magic sword, though. And they're able to stop it from killing people. And I love the little detail that, like, Cassidy wakes up. She's like, oh, crap, I lost control. That thing was so strong. Like, oh, my gosh, how many people did I kill or how many get people injured? And they're like, oh, none. We solved it. We lost the duel. So we're, let's just call it a draw because we saved your life. You lost control. You weren't really winning at this point. And they're like, yeah. And then they kind of go off buddy-buddy. And Fred turns to Amy and he's like, did you just organize all of this so Albert would have a, it, Albert and Neil would have a friend on campus, basically? And Amy's like, I neither confirm nor deny anything that you're saying. And then we also get a, uh, a first look at Fred's class. We get the first kind of two class, him trying to introduce everybody and go over the syllabus. Which it's just like, when I was in college, the syllabus is a great thing. And it tells you when all your assignments are due, sometime, maybe some most of the time. But like, we don't have to spend a whole class, guys. Like, I can read as much as everybody else. I mean, obviously, you guys know I can read. But like, we all can read usually when we're in college. And I'll look at the syllabus. If you want to follow it, that's great. If not, sorry, this is that's a way personal tangent. It was just, it was good flashbacks to college. Well, this may be a bad flashback. Remember listening to all the professors go over their syllabuses. So her next one is the impromptu field trip. This was a fun one. Al comes to visit. Al, if you don't remember, is his fairy companion. Well, she works for him. Turns out she's also summer royalty. Slipped that one under the bus, didn't she? We didn't catch I didn't count. I don't remember learning that she was royalty, just that she was a summer fae. Um, when she gets too close to Pieris, who is one of the students in his class, they accidentally teleport the entire class into a to the fairy realm but like a secret spot in the fairy realm big building turns out it's the how to kill a pair of human built by humans with lots of traps and tricks and things that are going around so it's kind of a well let's find everybody let's get everybody back and then let's go through and get home on the whole i think this is one of my lesser favorite ones it just really was that it was good not denying it it just wasn't as good as the other ones to me it was very okay we're here this was kind of like the we're learning more about things and like what's this mission and we never really find out until the end of that one and professor sequoia says yeah i took over this place that was built by humans humans kill uh, the parahuman and I made it you know and she's like and I took it over and now I have it blocked off but you never know with fairy magic and the magic doing unpredictable things like that locks it down better but she's like I took over trustal vent to make it a good place for parahuman it's a bad place and it does have a little bit of that mystery because while you're going through the first thing all of the uh, weapons are made of uh, silver which is not you know iron so the fae are immune so it's really starting to look like is this a fae training ground to kill all the other parahuman that we've been led into no it turns out it is human all our next story. Uh, this one I think was you know, one of my favorites. In the hectic homecoming. So it's the end of the, it's getting close to the end of the year. It's homecoming. Obviously all the pranks are coming out. Crystal is coming to visit and he's like, oh crap I didn't think this was going to be that big of a deal. So he hurries and texts Crystal like, hey it's homecoming. Please don't, you know, kill everybody on your way in. Not that she would, but like it's pranks. Don't worry. You know, luckily he's cool with it. They have some fun. They get there. And this one was a fun one because Crystal and him are talking and she's like, hey let me show you, see your classroom. I want to see you know where you teach and what you do all day it's like well it's just a boring classroom he's like no come show me like let's have some fun in the be- in the classroom and then uh fred gets it and- but then crystal turns it around and she's like yeah i'm gonna lecture you in the classroom and let's see if you can figure out some extra credit uh quite funny they happen to pass by uh three of his students working on a prank to make the pages turn of an animate of a statue it's a book with in some hands to make the pages turn unfortunately it brings the statue back to life not back to life but it animates the entire statue which is a monstrous giant statue under the ground and it's headed straight for the library to kill all the students they have to stop it and this was a nice story because we learn about valencia who is the student in his classroom that's kind of always been like interested in the class but then very scared whenever his wife gets mentioned turns out there's a good reason for that and that she is half demon where crystal has a full demon and, you know, sealed inside of her that lets her use the power when she's about to die. Valencia has a half demon so she can kind of pull the power. It's similar but just different enough, right? And so she's always afraid that she is going to turn evil or that Crystal is evil because her grandfather, who she loved, was who was a good person, but that he went bad basically because of the half demon inside of him. And Crystal had to come and kill him. And then that kind of, you know, produced this fear of, oh crap, Crystal's going to kill me if she meets me because she's evil because my grandpa was good obviously she kind of knows in her mind that her grandpa was not good he was doing bad things but it's so tough to reconcile that this is the side of you that i knew versus this is the side that i don't it was really nice and humanizing and some really good character development for one of students and for crystal we see a little bit more of that as fred goes he's kind of static but he's mostly reached this point where he is just fine he's not not that he doesn't need to continue to grow and change but the ways that he's growing and changing are slightly different and they're less pronounced whereas his supporting characters are now 
can grow up even more, which they've been doing in their previous books. In this one, you know, they seem to grow and now it's all together again. And now it's time for our final book, The Commencement Ceremony. Very close to graduation. And if you hadn't picked it up by now, here it is. Quinn comes back. He comes to fight Uzi. Well, first off, there's multiple attacks on Trestleven, which is crazy because there's been nothing. And now all of a sudden there's three. Turns out that Professor Glade isn't really a professor. She is something similar to Arch, which basically means immortal and heals. And she steals the time travel, not the time travel, the time compressing device that was given to him by the Fae with some very interesting questions. And I really like the way that Drew Hayes kind of came up with this lock and this fairy lock to work, which is that it settles around a person so it can't be tricked by blood because it's not directly to the blood. It's not direct the person. It is to the person, but it's all about like, how do you feel when you go upstairs? How do you feel when you look at the stars? Do you lead with your left foot or your right foot? So it's kind of these weird personal questions that aren't like personal, personal, but they are unique to you. And so that was really cool, but she's able to steal it because Frederick's like, yes, you can have that. You just have to go and say student. Of course, Quinn is part of the attack. He gets tricked. It, this was so good. They are fighting. Obviously, Quinn has him outmatched Tuz, because Quinn is Quinn and Frederick is Frederick. While he's meeting with his students, his one of his, Pierre's bodyguards is able to hold Quinn off for a little bit. Frederick drinks uh, the blood of all of his students. They willingly offer, so he's still under the effect where, since he's never taken blood forcefully, the effects are basically permanent. He still has jumping. He's going to get mind thing. Uh, students, he's getting an Ethereal wear bear kind of blood. So he's getting some pretty powerful effects here, especially since he's never taken it forcibly. So he's able to very last long, very much for him. So even Pierre's the Fae says, I'll give you some Fae blood, but Fae blood is special. Don't take it unless you absolutely have to. It's going to be, you know, bad for you. It'll give you a supercharge, but if you don't prep for it, you're going down. They, they fight a little bit. Quinn is going after his students. Frederick tries to get in the way, tries to pull out the fairy blood to drink it. Quinn stops him, takes the fairy blood, drinks it himself, is like, oh my gosh, you have the best. You empowered me so much more. And then he starts puking up his all of the other blood in his system. It was a trap and I didn't see it coming like Fred did. I should have seen it coming a little bit, but I, I don't know why. I just didn't. It was well played though. The fairies trick everybody, in, or Quinn at least, into getting more fairy blood. So now he can't ingest any more fairy blood, which means that he will no longer be able to stay hidden from everybody because one of the ways he's been able to do that by supercharging himself with fey blood and then kind of using that as unpredictability to hide himself more. So this was built on the attacks. We learned that Professor Sequoian is a dryad, which was sweet, but she is basically a forest. Like, And the reason that the light doesn't hurt uh, Frederick is because he's literally in a forest with the canopy over him. So there's no real light that's actually hitting him. It's crazy though. It's uh, That was so cool, that reveal. And of course, there's hints all over the place. The trees that kind of move when nobody's looking at it. There's no wind. The fact that their name is Sequoian, which is very close to Sequoia. And we learned the story of Quinn. But before we learn the story of Quinn, I did forget to mention that I wanted to. I felt bad for Keith here. He got put under that hypnosis that he was under that long-term hypnosis. I don't know how much of it was that if they were to see Frederick again, they would go to him, be under hypnosis. And like, that's when the hypnosis started. Or if the hypnosis started just when Quinn started his attack or when he saw Keith again, that's when it kind of kicked back in. So, but sad that Keith died. He was, he seemed like he was being a really good guy and that he was growing. So that was sad. But then we learned the story of Quinn that he was a mage in the distant past. He wanted to try and perfect how to turn people into a vampire to protect his family against a plague that only targeted mad people. It worked on him because he was one of the lucky few who turned into a vampire. It did not work on his son that he tried next on. And that kind of what created Quinn. He, I hate everyone. He took that love and that desire to help people and twisted it, twisted it and corrupted it. And now he just wants death. But hopefully he's not going to be able to stay hit any longer. I really hope the next book has a death win in it and that was some more. Pre I mean, I just love these books. So keep putting them out. Okay? Keep putting them out. We'll keep reading them even if Quinn keeps living through them. But I really think it's time for Quinn to hit the hit the road. So that's going to be everything I have to talk about Posthumous Education by Drew Hayes. Thanks everybody for listening. Thanks to David Hillowitz for doing outro music. If you have any questions or comments, please send them to LibromancyPod at gmail.com. Please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from. And remember to teach the magic of books. Thank you.